Okay, so it's been a while since we've done one of these pages. Ah, uh, but I thought I was feeling a little inspired and I would do, I don't know, probably two or three more pages. Seem to be doing them in groups of threes. That seems to be working out pretty well. So anyway, this is my Create This Book 2. I will link to the playlist in the iCard and then at the end of the video if you want to check out the other episodes in this series on my channel. In the meantime, I uh, flipped through and just sort of wrote down pages that I was inspired to do or that I thought I would like to do. And of course there were nine pages, I think, nine prompts that I that caught my attention because, say it with me, Ace can't make decisions. But uh, I did narrow it down to three pages. I will get to the other ones at a later date, I'm sure. So uh, we are going to start with page number 46, which is Create Editions. And the prompt says, add to these circles. So I'm going to go grab a pen and we're going to add to these circles. Now we're totally going to freehand this, which is a terrible idea. But when I saw this page, all I could think of were birds. Now hear me out. <laughs> um, like, I just want to draw some like stupid birds with like super long, ridiculous stock legs. So here, we're gonna add, I'll show you what I mean. I want, let's see, we're gonna put a beak here. This is my Pilot Pintour fine paint marker. It's just the first paint marker. I've been watching a lot of Casey Golden's videos recently and I like her like really simple kind of dumb style of art her like cartoony style so that's what I want Ugh, this pen's tip is a little bit thicker than I want it to be but oh well And I want him to have, when I said really long, stupid looking legs, I definitely meant really long, stupid looking legs. <laughs> this is dumb looking. I don't know why. It just all I could think of were like big circular blobby birds. <laughs> how stupid these look. Ah, oh, they're terrible. Now, you might be thinking, Ace, you're ruining this page, but <laughs> honestly, this is making me really happy. So, they almost look like Kirby's to me or something. <laughs> I don't know, does Kirby come in a bird form? I've never actually played the Kirby video games. I just know that Kirby turns into stuff when, when it, he, she, when things are eaten, by the pink blob, but the pink blob turns into stuff. There's that sort of Casey Golden eyes on one side. <laughs> and then let's make, let's make this one an egg. <laughs> there we go. All right. So this looks really stupid, but I don't want them to be just flo floating around. So I'm going to add a little bit more to these pictures, maybe with a thinner pen, and then I will add some color. As you can see here, I grabbed my Sakura PN pen and just scribbled in a background really quickly for these ridiculous stock legged birds. And then I proceeded to make my first mistake. I pulled out my travel watercolor palette. I have no idea what I was thinking. It's like I blocked out the first episode of the series from my mind because I tried to watercolor directly in this book then too and... 
Well, suffice to say, it went about as well as that time. I had immediate regrets, but at that point, I had committed, so there was no turning back, or so said my stubborn brain. One thing I did discover is the more pigment and less water you use, the better it seems to go, because it doesn't sink into the paper and ruin it as badly. So, yeah... After I stubbornly finished painting this picture with my watercolors, I went back over some areas with some water-based markers, mostly Ecoline brush pens, but also some Pentel brush pens, Zebra Mild Liners, Crayola Super Tips, just anything within arm's reach really that was water-based and could potentially add some shading to this. Once I was done with that, I went back in with my Sakura PN pen and made the background even more sketchy and scribbly to add to the uh, cartoony look. And I added some highlights with my white gel pen and then sealed the page with a layer of matte Mod Podge, which I have done for most of my flat illustrated pages so far. And here you can see the damage of how badly the watercolor leaked through the paper onto subsequent pages behind it, so... Yeah, don't be dumb and stubborn like me, just don't use watercolor directly in this book. I should have done it on a separate page and glued that into the book, which is what I do for the next two pages since this one went so badly, you'll see in a minute. Okay, and the next one I chose was page uh, 15. Create a merge. Choose two animals and merge them together. Now, I am going to, for this page, draw on separate paper, and then I'm going to tape it into the book, so let us trade. For this page, I decided for whatever reason I wanted to use my Copic markers. So here I have a piece of Copic blending card that I split in half before I started drawing. I wanted the image to be more on the pastel side, so I used my 0.5 light gray Unipin fine liner to do the line art for this merge. And for whatever reason, I decided it needed to be a merge of a fox and a burp. Specifically a cocktail, I think it is. The ones with the gray wings and the yellow heads with the red Pikachu looking cheeks. Those guys. And since I had two pages to work on, I did an adult on the right hand side, and then on the left I did two babies and one of the eggs they hatch out of. Because, of course, they hatch out of eggs, they're half burb. Duh. <laughs> so they have fox ears, tails, and front paws, with fluffy furry chests and pointy furry cheeks. As for the cockatiel parts, they have that tuft on top of their heads that cockatiels have, talons on their hind legs, and those big red cheeks. <laughs> Also, they have yellowish gold noses because I thought it was close to the color of a cockatiel's beak, but still allowed me to keep the fox nose. It was the best compromise I could come up with. Also, I love how the one baby on the far left is sitting like a cat with its front paws tucked under itself. I know it's a foxatiel, not a catatiel, but I just sort of drew it that way, and then I was like, oops, well, guess that's staying now. <laughs> As for the colors, I made the wings gray, like the cockatiel reference I was using. Of course, they had to have those round pink cheeks. <laughs> and I tried to make their bodies somewhere between orange and yellow as a sort of compromise between the color of a fox body and the color of a bird body. I put some semi-random circles in the background just because it looked boring to me without something. And I used my white gel pen again to add some highlights when I was done. Now to put these in the book, I decided to use Matte Mod Podge. 
I didn't need it for a top coat since I didn't top coat the Pet Peeves page from the last episode, and it was done in the same way, Copic markers on Copic blending card and then stick them in the book. And that page seems to be holding up just fine, but... I know you can use Mod Podge-like glue for decoupage, so I added it to the back of each page and stuck them in after I cut off the excess from the pages so that the prompt was legible and they fit in nicely before I closed the book and added some weight to the top to help it dry flat, because I didn't want all the pages to get wrinkly, which can sometimes happen if you use liquid glue. However, of course, when I went to open the book back up, the pages had stuck together. So that wasn't exactly a great plan. It was only a little in one small spot, so it wasn't ruined or anything, but it was definitely very annoying. All right, and for the last page, I chose... ...82 and 83. Create a line. Decorate this page using a long, continuous line. So, once again, I'm going to use paper instead of drawing directly in the book. So this is just regular computer paper, and I am doing it mostly outside of the book so that if I screw up, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to screw up, um, it won't it won't be devastating and I will be able to do it again. So let's um, figure out what I'm going to draw with one continuous line. Hmm. Okay, so for this image, I basically chickened out. I don't think it's cheating, but I did sketch a rough image with pencil first before going over it with the black marker. I'm not sure it's visible in the video, but I was really afraid of getting the proportions wrong, and I didn't want to draw this page a million times, so I figured that was the best compromise. It is still all one single black line that makes up each of these images. And though if you watch, I do pick up my hand a few times, that was only because my wrist was starting to bend uncomfortably, so I needed to reposition my hand. I always go back to exactly the same spot my pen left the page and continue from there, so it's still all a single line. Also, that hand on the girl is looking pretty rough, though. Haha, <laughs> please ignore it. I did my best. So after I did both of these, I couldn't just leave them black and white. It was way too boring. So I elected to use colored pencils in this third image. These are Faber-Castell colored pencils, and it's just a very quick and dirty coloring job. I blended it out super lazily with a couple of brushes and some zested pencil blend. You could use Gamsol or Mineral Spirits or Baby Oil to achieve the same effect. By the time I was done, I realized she looks like Poison Ivy from Batman. That was totally unintentional, but I can't unsee it, and now neither can you, I bet. <laughs> Once the Zestit Pencil Blend was dry, and you do want to wait if you use something to blend until it's completely dry, if you plan on putting a coat of Mod Podge over it, since most of the mediums that you use to blend colored pencils are at least slightly oily. And Mod Podge is water-based, so if there's oil left on the paper, it will resist the Mod Podge and make it beat up, since oil and water don't like each other. I decided to avoid the problem I had on my last two pages. I would use a good old glue stick to glue the pages down, and then put Mod Podge on top as a sealant. I was hoping the lack of liquid glue would save it from warping. However, this was also a terrible idea because I left the book open so nothing stuck together and the pages still wrinkled and warped. I think I'm just going to go back to using double-sided tape to stick pages in. It makes way less mess, and while it's easy to stick things in crooked if you don't line it up exactly right the first time, I prefer that problem to pages sticking together or warping. At least I can trim pages that overhang weirdly to the right shape once they're stuck in the book. Anyway, I hope you liked this Create This Book 2 installment. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you could click that like button, and let me know in the comments if there are any pages in particular that you're looking forward to. Does anyone else do Create This Book 2 art and prompts? I definitely recommend it, it's really fun to do these prompts. I like making these Create This 2 videos as well, so I'll keep recording them if you want to keep seeing them. 
please subscribe to my channel for more creative and interesting art. And until my next video, I will talk to all of you soon.